Hazır mısın? Euzubillahimineşşeytanirracim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Destur. Merhaba de sahibul seyf. Şeyh Abdul Kerim. Siyah Rabbani. Merhaba. We are asking support from our Şeyh. Sahibul seyf. Şeyh Abdul Kerim. El Kibri. Siyah Rabbani. May Allah raise his station higher and higher. And this holy night. May he send his him to us. May we always continue in this way, strong and straight. May He forgive our shortcomings. And may He complete what we cannot complete. We are happy. We are satisfied. The believer, he must be. What is he happy with? He's happy with his Lord. He's happy with what his Lord has given to him. The good and the bad. He's happy with what his Lord has shown to him. Has made him realize. He's grateful. Because the happiness of a believer is not the same as the happiness of an unbeliever. The happiness of a believer is not the same as the happiness of someone who is being disobedient to Allah. Don't make the same. Don't make the mistake to say that they are the same. I'm hearing so many times those ones who are claiming that they are the top level ones claiming that they are believers but they are busy 24 hours with the dunya and they don't like people to be busy with the ahira too much they don't like people to make zikr too much they're saying why are you being busy with this and we say why not they say well you know don't you know the dua the dua is saying, Ya Rabbi, give us the best of this world and the best of the hereafter. Don't you know that is the Prophet's dua? Don't you know that is the dua that is taught to us and is mentioning the world first? In dunya, in this world, first, then ahirat, which means we have to take care of our world first. And then we have to take care of the Ahirat. We are not Wahhabis to be disputing every Hadith, every Ayat, every position. I say, very good. It is good. It is true. The Ayat is saying, Ya Rabbi, give us the best of this world and the best of the hereafter. But we are asking you, what is your meaning of this world? The prophets, they live in this world, correct? Didn't they? 124,000 prophets. The way that they look at this world is not the same as the way others look at this world. Same world, but different reality. Musa alayhi salam he live in this world. He's calling to his people in this world. You think the way that he looked at this world to call his people to the way of Allah in this world, the way that he looked at this world is the same way as the Firaun look at this world. Same world. It's not the same. Completely different. Look at The way that Ibrahim salam look at this world, is it the same way as Nemrud look at this world? Same world. Ibrahim salam, he wants the best of this world. The best way to live in this world. 
isn't it? Is that the same way as the way that Namrut is saying? It is not. Holy Prophet now, the way that he looked at this world and he looked to this world and teaching those who are coming after him about this world, is it the same as the way that Abu Jahil and Abu Lahab look at this world? Not the same. Same world, but the reality is different. So now, when you say, give us the best of this dunya, which world you are looking at? Which dunya? Which best of this dunya are you looking at? Are you looking at the way that the awliya Allah, the way that the anbiya Allah, the prophets of Allah and the friends of Allah look at this world? Are you looking at this world through the eyes of Firaun and Abu Jahil and Namrut and the unbelievers? Because so many times, those Wahhabi type minded people who are saying, they're busy with this dunya, and then they say this dua, this ayat, saying the best of this world. And we ask them, what is this world meaning to you? They say, you know, whatever the ahli dunya they are running after, we have to have also. They're running after big cars, big houses, big wives, I mean, big bank accounts. So, Muslims also should have all of this. This Muslims, believers should have all of this. This is what Allah is meaning when He says, Prophet ﷺ is meaning when He says the best of this world. Is that true? It's not true. So, now we have a problem. Same ayat, same dunya but different realities. Which reality you want to follow? And which reality it is according to the will and the pleasure of Allah? And which reality it is according to the will and the pleasure of the ego and shaitan? Take your pick. It is open to you. Choose whichever one that you want to take. But don't fool yourself to say, no, 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 no. What? My ego wants is also what Allah wants, never. Because the way of the Prophet ﷺ, the way of the early Allah, they are clear. Because haq, it is distinct, it is clear from batil. You cannot say they are the same. So now those ones who are saying, no, we must run after this world, then later we're going to run after the hereafter. They always say, what happens when you die? What happens when you die? What happens when you die before you can run after the hereafter? And you collect everything from the dunya, but you didn't collect anything from the hereafter. If you go according to your understanding and your logic, you're saying both we are very, very blessed. Then take your dunya and bring to the hereafter. Take whatever you earn and put it inside the grave and see if you can uh, have a good hereafter. So many earlier teachings, so many earlier religions, they try to do that. Hmm? The Firauns, they bring everything that they own, they put it inside their graves to be with them. They take gold, they take silver, they take uh, jewels, they take spices. Uh, they, some of them, they even kill their wives and their slaves to put some of them. They even mummify their cats. They put their cat. They say, hereafter, I want my cat. So, so what happened? Did they win? No, they didn't win. Because even if they stay in the grave for 5,000 years, one day, one man, He's going to open up that grave and say, no, 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 you are dead. You don't bring anything with you. All these things that is in your grave, it is for the dunya, those ones who are living. You cannot bring it to the hereafter. Take it. Give it to me. It takes everything, isn't it? They even take the mummy. They call it mummy? Why do they call it mummy? Why are they not calling it daddy? Huh? Why mummy? 
something to think about. They even take that Firaun, all wrapped up, and they open it. They check all the bones. When it first came out, this, this obsession with Egypt and all these kinds of things, that is when the Hilafat is falling down, and all of them come into all these Muslim lands, and they decide to take and steal everything, and to put it in their houses, put it in their museums. <laughs> some of them, they go so crazy, they even say there must be some magic in the mummies too. And they take the dead bodies, and they grind them, and they eat them. So from that time, they were already uh, zombies. So why people are so upset now, say zombie apocalypse is going to come, terrible stuff. They're eating the mummy. They say this is very good cure. I'm not joking, they were. They make tea from it, and they drink. Don't try it, it's no good. Go to the garden, take some mint, make tea, drink it, it's good. So they couldn't bring anything, they couldn't even bring their cat. Hmm? They leave everything. Iskandar, when he passed from this world, he said, when I pass, I want everyone to see my body and make sure that the whole world sees this one who mm, conquered this whole world. But when you pass and when you display my body, make sure my hands are sticking out like this. Empty, empty. Saying, although I managed to conquer the whole world, Iskandar brought nothing with him to the grave. So you cannot take your dunya to your grave. So you say, first you have to earn the best of this dunya, then you earn the hereafter. So you earn the best of this dunya. The Firaons, they got the best of this dunya. But of course, today's people, they live better than Firaons, because today's people, they become Firaun. It's true. They become Firaun. Not even Firaun can have indoor plumbing and just flush like that. Everyone can do it today, hmm? sitting on the throne. In the old days, only the Firaons, they can afford to go to a, um, what is it called, mortician? Huh? Mortician? Mortician, you know mortician? When you're dead, somebody come and they put makeup on you. Don't try that too, no good. They dress you up. If you die and you see the image coming and you're <coughs> like this, and you're stuck like that, the mortician comes and they cut here to relax the muscles. So your face is like this, you can relax. They cut over here, they cut over here to relax your body. So it looks as if you are sleeping. Then they put makeup, put nice clothes to you. Before they do all of that, they take out all your blood and they put in a fire, a poison, to preserve your body. In the old days, only the Firaons can afford to do that. Today, everybody is doing it because everyone has become Firaons. So you cannot bring this dunya to Ahirat. What happens if you say, well, I'm not going to run after this dunya? Those ones who did not bring the dunya into Ahirat and they didn't prepare anything for the Ahirat, they're not prepared, they go into the grave with nothing. With nothing, they're going to have to suffer that time. Because they didn't teach themselves yet how to live the life of the hereafter. Because they're busy living the life of this dunya. But what happened to those people who did not collect this dunya? And they were busy collecting hereafter. Do they go to the, empties, uh, to the graves empty? 
they go to their graves full. In this dunya, maybe everyone is going to look at them to say, you are fools. You are not collecting from this dunya. You are fool. But this dunya is fake. This dunya is false. This dunya is just a deception. This dunya is just a lie. Don't say it is my words. It is the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Saying so many places in the Quran saying this world is a lie. It is a deception to you. So they're not busy with this lie. They're busy with the reality. So they collected everything. You think they're going to lose that time when they enter into the grave and when they enter into the world of the hereafter? They win. They win very big time. This world passing, this world does not have the value. Allah does not put the value to this world as much value as He put to one wing of a mosquito. So now, which dunya are you looking at? What kind of dunya is it that you want? Where are you taking it from, these teachings? Who are you following? If you're following the prophets and the inheritors of the prophets, you're going to look at this dunya the way that they look at this dunya. You're going to look at this dunya the way that Allah wants you to look at, at this dunya. And the Quran is saying in so many places, this dunya is nothing but amusement and deception and lies. And you're going to start looking at the Ahirat with the eyes of Allah and His Prophets. And the Ahirat is what? It is everlasting. The Ahirat, it is real. So once you start looking through their eyes, you're going to start preparing yourself for that journey. So what does it mean, the best of this world then? To the prophets, to the friends of Allah, the best of this dunya, is that, number one, they are free to worship. They are free to worship. They are not going to be so busy looking after the pleasures and the treasures of this dunya, they're going to turn away themselves from it. Because if you're busy with the pleasures and the treasures of this dunya, you cannot be free to worship. To the prophets, the best of this world is having Allah and His Prophet. And the best of this world, what this world can give, one pair of clothes, some bread to eat, a roof over your head. And being able to worship, that is the best of this world. Simple life. And the best of the hereafter, you think the prophets of Allah and the awliya Allah, they are busy thinking about what kind of food they're going to eat in the hereafter, in paradise, what kind of clothes they're going to wear, how many wives they're going to have, what kind of palaces they're going to live. Whatever that you're preparing yourself for this world, that's what you're going to prepare yourself for the hereafter. If you're busy looking after this glittering world, then you want the same world only in the hereafter. But the believer, it is completely different. The believer says, I don't want this world. And the hereafter is not a better, mm, uh, how we say it, version of this world. Now the hereafter to them is something that's completely different. The hereafter is what? Inna lillahi wa inna ilayki rajiun. I come from Allah and we return back to Allah. 
So the hereafter is what? The best of the hereafter is to be with Allah. Do you understand? To be with Allah. This is the best of the hereafter. And if you are not practicing how to be with Allah in the dunya, how you can be with Allah in the hereafter? How are you going to be, be, are you going to be with Allah? How are you going to be with Allah? Only in the remembrance of Allah the hearts can find satisfaction. So be with Allah in this world. Make a zikr. Be with the salihin. That time you are practicing to be with Allah. This is the best of the dunya. And we hope to get better in the ahirat to be with Allah to be with his prophet, to be with our shaykh, to be with the ones that we love. If you love this world, this world will lead you to the fire. If you love Allah and his prophet, والسلام, if you love the awliya Allah, they will lead you to the doors of Jannat. And from there, they may ask you, where do you want to go? If you want to stay, stay. If you want to be with us, we have another journey we are going to make. Because the journey is never ending. May Allah forgive us and make us uh, to practice the life of the hereafter here in this dunya. We are happy because this is the best life. We are trying to live a simple life. We are trying to worship. We are very weak creatures, but we are happy because we have Allah and His Prophet. Because we have our faith, because we have our shares, uh, feet and hand over us. And we are running away from the confusion and the darkness of this world. So we are crying. We are crying. The skies, they are crying. The earth, it is crying. At the cruelty and the oppression that this world is going through every single day. Allah is the most patient one. But we wait. We wait until the time when Haq is going to take over everywhere. And this is the time for the preparation. May Allah Wake up this ummah before it goes too late. May Allah send Mahdi alayhi salam, Mimisa alayhi salam. May Allah send Sultan al awliya and Sahib al Saif soon, inshallah, to bring this world back to a justice and to a balance. May Allah forgive us. Al Fatiha. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullah.